Is it working? I can't even tell. It's not launching yet. So. Just wait for there to be people. There are people. Oh gosh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Oh, it took a minute for it to load. There's some, oh my gosh. Hi, everyone. Um, literally never been this many people watching me on time. It is the Riley. Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, I do have green walls. This is my bathroom at, at my parents' house. I'm back for spring break, not at my dorm for the week. Hi everyone, I am Aunt Cole. Wow, it has been a while since someone's called me that. That's what I wanted Charlie to call me when she was a, a firstborn and um, didn't stick. Um, I am streaming from the bathroom because I am going to be doing my makeup at some point. So I need to be where the mirror is. Um, so that is why I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> I promise it's not a weird thing. Um, I just need to be where my makeup and, and the mirror is. Um, my spring break's been good, very relaxing. I haven't gone anywhere yet, just been hanging out with, with the fam. I went with Sydney today to get her still buffering tattoos. That's been the biggest um, part of my spring break so far. Um, my favorite lipstick, ooh. Oh, hi, Sid. <laughs> um, I don't know, I don't wear lipstick a lot. I really like, um, uh, I don't know. I wear chapstick that's tinted more than, um, I wear lipstick. I wear Burt's Bees tinted chapstick a lot, um, instead of lipstick just because it's, it's easier to keep up with. Um, my favorite song currently, um, I've been listening to Heather's The Musical a lot. It's been stuck in my head. Um, but also I'm in rehearsals for Mamma Mia this summer. I am in the show, so that's all I've been listening to because I need to know music before you can go on stage and sing in front of people. Um, what else? What else? My least favorite color. I don't have a least favorite color. Uh, maybe, I don't wear pink a lot. I don't like pink. It's Charlie's favorite. It's my least favorite. Um, who am I, Mamia? I am Sophie. So, yeah, it's my first big part that is not, um, a chorus part in a show I've ever been in. That's 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 fun. Um favorite Heather song? Oh gosh. Um I really like Fight for Me. I really like um Candy Store, That Girl Walking, all of the um, big ones, all the popular ones. Um Fight for Me is iconic. <sighs> what role do I want that I haven't done yet? Um Hmm, that's a good question. I've always kind of wanted to do um, Les Mis and be Eponine. I've also always wanted to do Mamma Mia, so this is, you know, kind of me getting to do that. Um, my second least favorite color. Why do you want to know my least favorite color? Uh, I don't know. I really like blue and green. Those are my favorites, so I guess everything else counts as some order of my least favorite colors. I'm going to college and I'm coming fall and I'm very nervous. What is the one thing that people always forget to mention that's a must have in a dorm? Ooh, um, that people always forget to have. I'm gonna start pulling my hair back because I'm gonna start putting on makeup in a minute. Um, hmm. I didn't forget a lot. I feel like most people that I live with, we overpacked a lot. When we first moved into our dorms, um, I packed way too many clothes. I um packed way too much stuff and have ended up bringing a lot of it back to my house since then um yeah I think most people just bring too much stuff I don't think I forgot anything I think that you just are gonna think you need a lot more than you actually need um what else best Justin story or are people asking best Justin story okay so I have two I'm pretty sure one of them I've definitely told on still buffering before um Maybe not the other one. The one I think I've told them still buffering before is that when I was younger, I went and I uh, was hanging out with Sydney and Justin for a little bit. And um, it was just the three of us. And we were going to get um, Chick-fil-A and nuggets. And we went and got a um, party tray that has like 50 or 100 nuggets in it or something. Um, 
And as we went up and got it and picked it up from the counter, um, Justin said, this isn't isn't for a party. This is just for me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, So that was pretty good. Also, when he told me that he got a piece of paper signed for me by Mitchell Mitchell Musso, who played a character in Hannah Montana when I was still very much into Hannah Montana. And it took me a few years to figure out that it indeed was not signed by Mitchell Musso. He did just sign a piece of paper and tell me it was Mitchell Musso. Um, and I kept that for a really long time and kept it in its own special box, in its own special place. I didn't want anyone to touch it. I didn't want to lose it. And um, then I got older and figured out, no, he just, just signed a piece of paper. Um, did Sydney ask a question? I'm sorry I missed your question, Sid. Um, there are just a lot, of, a lot of things going on. Um... Who's my favorite sister? <laughs> um, I love both of my sisters equally, Sydney. You know that. I don't have a um, a favorite. I love you. I love you both. Um, yeah, the Mitchell Musso story haunts me as well because it it is um a little traumatizing. <laughs> uh, I'm a STEM major in college, but I love art. How do I strike a balance between art and work? And tell me about the art you love. That's a good question. Um, so I'm not a major that has anything related to art anymore because I've changed my major, uh, which people have asked. When I started doing my makeup, I'm still going to keep talking. Um, I changed my major to a double major in political science and English because I want to go to law school after undergrad. And I wasn't enjoying the journalism classes as much um, as I thought I was going to. So I switched my major. And I don't really have anything that has to do with art in my schedule anymore. But there are a lot of really cool art classes at my university. Um, I am going to sign up for some. So, uh, you know, sign up for an art class if you want. You have free time in your schedule. I think you have a lot more free time in your schedule when you're in college than you think you're going to. I thought I was going to have no time at all, and I um, have a lot more space in my schedule for classes that I enjoy more so than just ones that I need for my major. So, um, yeah, take some art classes. And what major do I, or what art do I enjoy? Um, I really like pottery. I took a pottery class in high school, and um, I went to a lot of pottery camps at the Museum of Art here um, when I was younger. I really like pottery. I would like to take a pottery class at some point again. I think that was really fun. Um, the sound of my bracelet while you do your makeup is even more. <laughs> oh, I should probably take these off. That's probably really annoying. <laughs> um, uh, oh my gosh, my English teacher from high school is watching right now. Hi, Miss Reed. <laughs> As you and I was to class. Um, do I watch Crazy Ex Girlfriend? I do. It is one of my favorite TV shows, and I love it a lot. Um, what was the process like for recruiting all the teens in that episode from the damn TV show? Uh, yeah, those are actually a lot of people I just went to high school with that um, I was friends with and close with at the time. The funniest part is I actually just got a message from one of them that I'm still friends with a few days ago or maybe a week or so ago that said that someone who just randomly messaged her on, on Instagram was like, hey, were you in the My Brother, My Brother and Me TV show? <laughs> just all these people that, um, you know, did, that get random messages from people all the time, even though that we filmed that like what, three years ago. I don't even know how long ago that was. It was, it was a while ago. Um, what am I hoping to do after law school? Um, so... I just recently decided to go to law school um, this semester. I was thinking about it a lot last semester, and I wasn't sure, so I didn't change any majors yet, and I just kept doing what I was doing, doing journalism. Um, And uh, I would like to go into civil rights and social justice law. Um, I don't don't know exactly what I want to do yet. I do want to, like, actually do, like, you know, like, be in a courtroom doing cases. I've always been really interested in, like, true crime documentaries and and, um, the stories behind people, like, wrongful convictions and things like that. Always really interests me. I get really into those things. So I would love to work in something like that or the kind of work the ACLU does, um, stuff like that. Uh, That'd be really interesting to me. I think that's what I'd like to do at this point. But, you know, I 
haven't taken any law classes yet or started any law school, so we'll see if I change my mind once I actually start doing that. <laughs> um, has it been challenging to balance school, social life, podcasts, etc.? Um, a little bit. I uh, I do not have as much free time as I thought I was going to. Um, I, I know it's weird. I say you have free time with your classes, which I do. I have a lot of time during my class day where I can schedule other classes if I want. But once my class day is over, it's kind of like, you know, I'll either go record or I have to go post an episode, which I have to do today. Post an episode today. <laughs> um, now I have rehearsal every evening. Um, and I still try to take weekend trips to visit um, my boyfriend, who I'm in a long-distance relationship with. Um, I still try to do that every once in a while. So I try to get work done before I go do that. Um, so, you know, I uh, it is tough balancing all the things that I want to do or that I have to do. But it's it's worth it because all the things I do I really enjoy. So it's, it's fun. And it's worth it. Um, oh, you're living in a suite next year. Any tips? Um, I love living in a suite. I don't know if you are in the same kind of suite I'm in. I live in a suite that has four bedrooms and two people in each bedroom. So there are eight of us in there and we have um, one shared common area and then two bathrooms. And both the bathrooms have a um, um, shower and a toilet and a sink area with two sinks. So you can like kind of people can be showering and getting ready all at the same time, um, you know, while someone else is doing that. So it's... um. It's nice. I really like it because you have a lot more room than some of the smaller ones do. And um, I think it's really nice. And I like having a lot more roommates because I have stuff I can hang out with or stuff I can, places I can be and people I can hang out with, uh, not just in my bedroom. So I really enjoy it. Uh, my only tip would be um, make sure to, if you can have a fridge, bring your own fridge because sometimes sharing space is hard in, in small mini fridges. <laughs> Um, any more questions? You mean how many, how many questions? I am Justin's wife's sister, a fellow Next On podcaster, and I'm glad you love me. I love all of you as well. Um, what is my favorite animal? Penguins, for sure. I also really like dogs. Um, I don't have a dog, but I wish I did. And I thought about getting one when I move into my own apartment someday because I love dogs so much. Um, but I don't have one right now. I don't have any animals right now, actually. Um, my favorite Disney Channel original movie? Definitely High School Musical or Camp Rock. Um, I think I probably watched both of those and all of their sequels um, countless times. I, I still sometimes listen to the music because they were just like, I think the biggest Disney Channel original movies when I was growing up. Um, yeah, those were definitely my favorites. Yeah, Camp Rock was amazing. Um, recommended music. I think that's a question someone's asking. If not, I'll do it anyways. Um, I've been, what have I been listening to lately? Let's, let's just go look. What have I been listening to? Um, Heather's, again, I recommend. It's a good musical. If you're not as in the musicals, music from Star is Born. It's really good. Um, Shallow is really good. The new Jonas Brothers song I've been listening to. I've been listening to a lot of Billie Eilish recently, who, uh, makes me feel a little bad. She's younger than me, and she's super talented, doing a lot of really cool things. Um, her music's really good, too. It's really, really relaxing, um, more of like an alternative feel. And Dodie Clark has always been one of my um, favorite YouTubers slash musicians, and, and I've always looked up to her. Um, now she started releasing music that you can actually download, which is um, great, because I, I used to make little YouTube playlists and just keep my phone playing on YouTube or on my computer or whatever so I could listen to her music. Um, but she's always been one of my favorites. Uh, Billie Eilish is... I think she's 17. She was born a year after I was, so she's not that much younger than me. Yes, Sid, also Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> um, who spearheaded the creation of Still Buffering? So, um, I guess, I don't know. Okay, so Sydney and I started just the two of us um, for the first, I think, four or five episodes. And um, I don't know, like, I kind of we kind of had the idea together when I was on Sawbones and people liked it. Um, and then I think 
I, I think I came up with the name maybe, uh, and then we both just had the idea to to make it about teens because I wasn't aware of any other teenagers doing podcasting. Um, so yeah, that's I think that's the most unique thing about my sisters and I anyways, is that we're so far apart in age. So talking about that is a, a unique perspective that I think, you know, you always try to find something that no one's talking about. I think that was definitely something that we thought no one else was talking about. I don't think anyone else is still, I don't know, but yeah. So it was, it was a joint effort um, for sure. My favorite Dodie song. Um, I really like Monster. I've been listening to her new album a lot, so Monster has been one of my favorites. Um, but uh, Sick of Losing Soulmates has always been one of my favorites. And um, oh gosh, what's that one called? Secret for the Mad, also one of my favorites. Um, honestly, all of her songs. I don't think there's one I don't like. Um, did I enjoy DMing for the DD bonus episode? I really did. Um, it was really fun. I actually had DM'd once before for my roommates and some of our friends at school. Um, and I was not very good at it. I didn't really know what I was doing. And we were talking about doing the bonus episode. I was like, well, I guess, I guess I, I should, if we're going to have mom on, you know, kind of do like we've done a, my sister, my sister, me bonus episode before from Max Fun Drive, which by the way, if you want to, if you want to donate to the Max Fun Drive, it's maximumfun.org slash donate if you want to, you know become a part of our, our Max Fun family. It's the Max Fun Drive is nearing an end. Um, we all really appreciate it, and we always appreciate anyone who can become become a member or tell people about it or share information, share our shows, listen to our shows, all that kind of stuff. Um, but, yeah, I did really enjoy it. Um, we figured if we were going to follow that kind of format that, that the brothers had already established, I probably should DM. So I offered to, and... Um, it was really fun. I like it because I, I am the kind of person that I like having the kind of things laid out for me. I'm not as good as being on the spot and coming up with things. So um, the fact that I could kind of be in charge of the um, the uh, the story and um, not have to worry about coming up with things on the spot, um, that was a lot of fun. I'm, I, I enjoy that aspect of it more than, than playing it, I think. Um, where do you begin to start playing D&D? Just, like, find people that you enjoy hanging out with and that you like uh, to to have fun with and, and do it. Um, find someone who's willing to DM. Maybe you're someone, maybe you are the kind of person like I am that enjoys, you know, um, creating the story or being in charge of the story more than having to come up with things on the spot to be a part of the story. So, you know, just find people who like doing it and doing it. I don't uh consider myself a professional in any aspect I've literally played it twice <laughs> so don't take my advice on what the kind of person you're asking but um yeah that that's that's what I have to say um what race and class would I play in D&D if I didn't DM uh so okay so we did play once with my family and I did not DM over Christmas break probably like two years ago Justin DM'd for us and my sisters and my mom and dad and I all played no, I think it was just us. Um, I was a an elf bard, I think that's what that is. Um, I forget my name. It was Mercury something. I was uh, I I was a teen in in this world, in that world as well as I am in this world. I was the teen of our group, and um, I played instruments, and that's literally all I remember. <laughs> I was not very good at it, but that's that's um. That's what I was. Um, am I still taking the illustrator class? Yes, I am. It is a very weird um, format, weirdly formatted class because it is for media design um, as it is required for journalism majors and I think advertising and PR majors as well at my school. Um, but we have to do a lot of design work in Illustrator. I am still taking it. I actually just turned in a big project um, right before spring break. Um, so I don't have anything to do with it right now, which is nice because a lot of the work is very time consuming and stressful. So not having to worry about it for a week is very nice, but I do enjoy that class. Um, I'm glad that my first major allowed me to take classes like that and, um, you know, learn some skills that I might not need, but you know, it's a pretty cool thing to know how to do. And my school gives us access to all that software for free. So, you know, 
that was the first time Nossie made an appearance. You were right, Sydney. Um, was when we all played together. Sydney was Mossy, and her character just grew from there. I love Mossy and all of her tearaway pants. Um, how are classes going in general? Good. Uh, I don't have classes on Fridays right now. That's really nice. I'm not going to be able to do that next semester because when you start two new majors, you um, can't take Fridays off for a while. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been really nice this semester. I'm uh, enjoying it while it lasts. Hi, Jeffrey. Jeffrey's here, everyone. I didn't know you knew how to comment. He was texting me. Um, favorite tea or hot drink? So I, when I'm drinking um, caffeinated things like uh, tea and coffee, um, I usually go with iced more often than hot. I don't really know why. I guess it's just always been a preference of mine. I think it's easier to drink faster to get ca caffeine in my body as quickly as possible um but when i am drinking hot drinks i am a sucker for a good peppermint mocha from starbucks it is my favorite hot drink of all time and it's really disappointing you can only get it you know how many weeks a year um i drink starbucks more than i should probably because there's one on my campus um and it's really easy to get to and you can use your like your um I'm trying to say your student plus dollars so they're like on your account to pay for your Starbucks. So that's, that's really nice too. Um, no, you're not missing me saying trans rights, but like, I will say it because obviously like that's an important thing. I, sorry if I missed anyone saying that I, there are a lot of things going on. Um, but yeah, for sure. Um, favorite type of food or restaurant. Mm, I don't know. Uh, seafood's always kind of been my favorite type of food, but considering we live in a landlocked state, um, it's not very easy to get really good seafood. So I really like when we go to the beach and get a seafood because it's really good down there. Um, can I do a makeup tutorial? Uh, I wouldn't take this video as a makeup tutorial because... Um, I don't really know what I'm doing. I've just kind of been doing the same um, makeup routine since I started wearing makeup when I was like 12 or 13. I was just wearing like concealer and mascara. Um, I just kind of evolved it from there. So I'm not the person to watch. I just thought this would be a fun thing to do um, while I was answering your all's questions. Um, but I'm not very good at it. Uh, I would not take my advice or follow what I'm doing. Unless you, you think you like the look and then go for it, but I also haven't even been telling you what I'm doing, so I guess I've been pretty bad at doing makeup tutorial if that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, video games I like. So I really, <laughs> uh, the only video game I play consistently is um, Stardew Valley. <laughs> uh, I started playing it because one of my sweet mates actually told me about it and told me that she and her um, long distance girlfriend play it a lot together because you can play, you know, the internet with other people who are there with you. And she suggested that I do it with my boyfriend because we're long distance. And um, so I started playing it by myself and then convinced him to join me. And now I think we have put in maybe 36 hours into our game total, maybe 48. I don't know. We played it way too much, play it way too often. And we should be doing homework. But, um, it's a lot of fun because like I, I, I get really stressed when you play um, video games um, and there's a lot expected of you and there's nothing expected of you in Stardew Valley except to just like live, live your little farmer life. Um, and it's really fun and you can do it with people who aren't there with you. So Jeffrey and I can play together when we're not together and that's a fun way to, to spend some time together when you can't be together. Um, Will we play more D&D? Probably together as a family. Um, I don't know if we will or record it anymore because um, we do our show already. But, you know, it's fun. <laughs> um, let me see. Stardew Valley is the best for long distance relationships and friend friendships, and it's very fun. Um, the music is rad and it is very chill. Um, I live pretty close to where I'll be going to college. Would you recommend just staying at home or going to live in a dorm? So I live very close to where I go to college. I My house, like where I am right now, is literally maybe less than 10 minutes away from my dorm, my college campus. Um, 
And I, for me personally, I really like staying on campus. I really like the feel of having like the college experience where you're kind of learning how to be independent and learning how to, to do things on your own, but also being able to come back home whenever you need it, um, which is really nice because, you know, if there's a weekend where your friends are, are gone or going out of town or you're lonely or you don't really have anything to do, just being able to like stop in your house and hang out with your family if you're close with them is really nice. And I come home for dinner every Sunday and get to see everyone still. Um, which is really nice because I feel independent, but also can come back and see the whole family once a week. And I don't get too homesick ever because I'm right here and so close. But living on campus definitely, I think, makes you feel more independent, more like an adult, as much as an adult as you can feel when you're still 18 years old. Um, what else? Um... Seconding the how was PodCon question. Oh, I didn't see you the first time. PodCon was really fun. I really liked PodCon. I really like being able to, to go to the places where I can meet the people that like our show or listen to our show um, and talk to them about it because it's always really cool to hear how people that um, listen to your show, how they think about it, how it's helped them or or that they like to listen to it. It's, it's just always nice to hear someone say they like your work and um, getting to meet people in person that say that is really cool because there's not really a lot of people in Huntington who, who know what I do or who uh, listen. Um, so being able to meet people in person like that, that's really nice and it feels really good. Um, the crunch thing was hilarious. That, um, that was something that I agreed to without really thinking about what would actually be required of me. Hank Green did tell me what would be required of me. I knew ahead of time and then just didn't think about how that would actually feel doing that on stage in front of a lot of people. Um, but I'm glad I did it um, because it was really fun. It was really fun. I'm glad I got to be a part of something like that, the PodCon. So that was really fun. Um, how does it differ when you record a podcast with your family rather than just having normal conversations? So really, uh, I feel like our podcast episodes are really similar to conversations we just have. Like when we're, when we're deciding what we're going to talk about on the show, we'll just kind of pick a topic and then talk about it for a little bit before we start recording. So we can, you know, see like we could talk about this and this and kind of create some sort of um, an overview for how the episode's going to go and make sure we have enough to talk about. And um, I, I think the conversations we have before the show are just really similar um, to the conversations we have on the show. It's, it's us getting the chance to talk to each other and making each other laugh. And that's all we're really thinking about. So I think that pretty much if you listen to a conversation we had outside of recording a show, it would sound pretty much just exactly like an episode we were to record. Um... My favorite vine. I really like the, the look at all those chickens. <laughs> also the road work ahead vine because um, when my classmates and I went on a trip once, we were um, flying there and we were driving to the airport and we saw a road work ahead sign and all of us simultaneously knew the vine. Um, so we said it then throughout the entirety of the trip by the end of the trip we all were tired of it and we all were tired of each other but it was so fun just to have this thing like every time one of us saw a road work ahead sign even if there wasn't one if someone would ask a question we would all just answer like i sure hope it does or i sure hope it's not and we still do that now and that trip was you know two months into the school year in in october so um yeah, this is this is Gen Z culture. <laughs> it really makes me sound like such a um, a teen, but yeah, it's um, it's a good one. <sighs> Favorite city I've traveled to. I love New York. I am um, a sucker for New York and for big cities. Um, I like being be able to visit my sister when I go to New York too. That's always really a nice bonus. Um, but honestly, I think my favorite city I've ever traveled to is Seattle when I went for PodCon. Um, it's just so like, I don't know. It, if you've been to Seattle, you'll, you'll probably know what I mean. And I've literally only been there twice. So I'm, I'm not talking like I live there. Um, I'm not an expert, but like, 
you get the city life, but also there's like greenery and, and, and water and trees. And I don't know, it's just like a really nice combination of being able to live or being able to visit somewhere that like has um, a nice, I don't know how to describe it, a nice scenery, but also a city, if that makes sense. Like a good combination of where I am and, and like a New York type place. So I really like Seattle. I really had fun when I visited. Um, I'm sure I've gotten to stay longer. It's the only thing I wish is that I would have gotten to be there longer the two times that I've been there. Um, any favorite cartoons? Um, I watch a lot of cartoons with Charlie. Um, so whenever she watches her shows, like DC Superhero Girls, always a good one whenever she's watching it. But cartoons that I've watched, I used to be super into Adventure Time. Like I used to love that show and watch it 20 times over. Um, I really like Steven Universe too, though. That's one I've watched more recently that I do like a lot that I wish I would have watched more of than I actually do watch. Um, favorite book I read as a kid? Okay, so I started reading Harry Potter after everyone else. So I feel like everyone I talk to always says that Harry Potter is the book that influenced their childhood most. I started reading it um, after everyone else I knew was reading it. Um, I was kind of late to the party, but I think the books that I read most as a kid, I read a lot as a kid. Um, I don't know, I really liked Junie B. Jones. <laughs> and I think that I read those um, consistently every time a new one would come out because it was one of those that like there were 20 or 30 of them that were always coming out. But I also read Archie comics a lot as a kid because they were all Sydney's old ones. So they would just be in, in the house from where she had left them stored there after she moved out. And I would read those a lot. Um, so that's not, I mean, it's a comic book, but like I still read those all the time. Um, um, thank you. Thank you, Sid. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, my favorite class right now. Um, what classes am I? Hold on. Let me think about what classes I'm taking before I answer. <laughs> okay. So I'm in this um, honor seminar class that's a mixture between math and art to kind of find the relationship between the two. And, um, that's probably my favorite class I'm taking right now because we don't do a ton of super hard math stuff and I'm not a math person. I'm not very good at math. Um, but we, uh, we make a lot of cool art stuff. Like we made sculptures and welded them together. And, um, we also made big mobiles that we had to like do the math to figure out how to balance them properly and cut things out of metal and cut things out of wood and paint them and decorate them and all that kind of stuff. So, I get to make art, which I don't really get to do a lot with my major, and I feel like I'm also learning something and getting better at math because I'm not a math person, not very good at math. Yeah, it's like smart. Smart. <laughs> um, favorite flavor from that cool world ice cream place. Um, so my favorite world ice cream flavor I've ever had is one that was, oh, well, I don't even know what it was called. It was like coffee ice cream with Kit Kats in it. It's really good. I, I don't really like chocolate that much, which every time I see it, say it around my family, my family will like, how you? But I'm not really a big fan of chocolate, but coffee ice cream um, is my favorite, one of my favorite flavors of ice cream and Kit Kats are the only kind of chocolate I like. So the best, the best combination. Um, Favorite Steven Universe gem? I find myself identifying with Pearl a lot. Um, I also really like Garnet. I don't know, I like all of them. I haven't watched it in a while, um, sadly. <laughs> I don't have the time to watch as much as much stuff for pleasure as I wish I did. Um, did I read the Dear Evan Hansen novel? I did! I um, I love the Dear Evan Hansen novel. Dear Evan Hansen is one of my favorite musicals. I actually get to go see it um touring production at the end of the semester which is what I'm looking forward to to get me through this semester um and yeah it's one of my favorite musicals and I love listening to it and um yeah I read the book it was also very good <laughs> uh favorite cereal okay another controversial another hot take since I don't like chocolate I don't really eat cereal often either. I don't know what it is about me. I don't just don't like sweet stuff or I don't like um, 
stuff everyone does like and I should like. Um, but I do really like Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Um, it's cinnamony and it's, it's, you know, tasty and sweet and delicious and my favorite. Um, I know Justin is going to disown me. He is going to be very mad. I'm sorry, Justin. I just... It's not, not my thing. Cereal's not my favorite. Um, it is cinnamony and toasty and crunchy. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. It's just like, this is good, you know? If you've had cinnamon toast crunch, and it, it's good. Um, does anyone else have any questions for me? Anyone, anyone, anything, anyone wants me to talk about specifically? Teen questions or still buffering questions, podcast questions? That, I don't know what people think they want me to talk about. Um, do I watch any YouTubers? I do watch a lot of YouTubers. Um, I watch Dodie Clark a lot, mainly, primarily. I also really love Jenna Marbles because her videos just make me laugh. And sometimes it is really nice to just be able to laugh. Um, and her videos always just really make me laugh and a really a nice escape when you're looking for something kind of dumb to watch, but also really, really good. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, talk some more about musical theater. What's your favorite older show? Um, I found out that I guess a lot of people don't like cats, but I really like cats. And it's one of those shows that I've always wanted to be able to do. Um, even though I can't dance, I don't know why I think I should do cats. I'm not really that good at dancing, but I um I have always loved cats, and I guess a lot of people don't like cats. But I think that's one of my my favorite older musicals. Um, yeah. Let's see, I love Tessa Violet. I saw her as an opener when I went and saw um Dodie at a concert in Columbus, and. She has become one of my favorites as well. I hadn't heard her before, and then I heard her at that concert. And, yeah, she's one of my favorites, too. Um, what's the toughest part about working on Still Buffering? Uh, I don't – there's not a lot of tough stuff. I think the only thing that's ever um, tough is doing the editing because sometimes, like, it just doesn't work out as well as you think it's going to, and some things don't sound right or don't sound as, as perfect as they could. You don't ever want to make it so people can't enjoy your show or have to go a week without it. Um, yeah, I think that's that's the most difficult thing. Uh, okay, hi, Justin. Um, Justin said, this is Justin, please talk about how much you love Casey Masterpiece barbecue chips. Okay, <laughs> so um, when we were... Um, when I was much younger, we went to, I think it was Disney, I think, Justin, Sydney, and Taylor, my parents were all there, and I guess I just used to really, I don't eat them as much anymore, I know Justin's gonna say I'm lying, but I just, I used to really be into, um, uh, barbecue chips, and I had a little container with me, right by the bed we were all going to bed as you do like you know your nighttime snack when you're like eight years old and you just want some some chips when you're going to bed so um yeah I just started eating them all the lights were off I was going to bed and I started crunching on my, my chips and after that Justin um coined me as KC and that is what I have been known as ever since um so you know Barbecue chips are good. Like, it, come on. <laughs> um, yeah, I do remember Justin and Sydney's wedding. I actually uh, sobbed the entire time. I was the um, flower girl, and I remember walking down the aisle, and as soon as I got to the end and sat where all the bridesmaids and my family was and everything, I just started sobbing. And if you watch the video of it now, you can hear me just loudly crying the entire time because I thought Sydney getting married meant that um, she was going to go away forever. And I thought that I would never see her again. She was going to move out and just be a part of someone else's family, and she wasn't going to be my sister anymore. So I was just loudly crying the entire time at their wedding. Um, but... Yeah, that's pretty much all I remember. I was pretty young. I think I was like five years old. But then I realized that she was not going away forever and she did come back. And yeah, but that's how I remember Sydney Justin's wedding. It's just crying the whole time, even though I was the flower girl. Um, 
when I was a little kid, what I want to do and what I want to be when I grow up. So when I was younger, I used to think I wanted to be a doctor because Sydney was a doctor. So I just wanted to, you know, I looked up to Sydney and wanted to be like her. So I told people I wanted to be a doctor so you'd be like my sister. Um, but then I really wanted to be a fashion designer for a long time. And I got all these like kids I was like probably like nine or ten years old like all these like little trace kids like trace all the outfits and color them in whatever color you want I thought I was gonna like be the next big fashion designer and I read all like the, the 17 magazines and tiger beat and stuff and um want to make all their outfits and, and cut them out and trace them and all those kinds of things and then I realized I wasn't very good at that because I was just drawing whatever I saw I wasn't really making anything <laughs> um I watched a lot of Project Runway Junior and thought I was going to be like that as well. Um, but yeah, that was what I used to want to be. Um, oh, hi, Charlie. Sydney told me Charlie says, hi, baby. Says, hi, poodle. Um, Charlie taught me how to ride double, triple skateboard today, which is a scooter, if you don't know what double, triple skateboard is. Um, so that's been the most exciting part of my day is getting Sydney a tattoo and Charlie teaching me how to double triple skateboard. So thank you, Charlie. Um, I do hang out with Charlie and Cooper a lot. I see them at least once a week at, at dinner with my whole family. And, um, I just love hanging out with them. Charlie's my, my best friend and you know, we all hang out and play games together and, and yeah, I love hanging out with them. Um, um, uh, would I get a tattoo? If so, what up? Well, spoiler alert, I have a tattoo. Um, it's actually a still buffering logo um, that I got, I think, like a year and a half ago On the, at this point. Um, right after, or a few months after one of our first Max Fun drives, um, I got this one. Um, and today... Sydney got hers to match, so now it's left this tailor to get hers to match both of us, and then we'll all three have still buffering tattoos. Um, it's been a really weird experience having people just see it when you know casually like roll your sleeves up to do something, and they're like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Did you like draw that on your arm?" I'm like, well, no, it's, it's a tattoo. And they always get kind of weird look, like, "Whoa, a tattoo? Cool." Yeah. <laughs> and then you have to, they ask what it's for, and then you have to tell them it's for your podcast. I'm like, what's a podcast? And then you have to explain what a podcast is. Um, it's always a, a, a big uh, conversation when you show someone a tattoo that's for your podcast. And they ask, one, why do you have a tattoo of it? Two, what's a podcast? And three, well, what do you talk about? Um, but it's always a fun conversation. Um, Favorite macroy product of the ones you work on? I love all of them. Honestly, I I listen to a lot of my family shows when I'm in the car for long periods of time. Um, I list the only other um, podcast I think I've ever listened to that's not one that someone in my family created was Serial. I listened to the first season of Serial and I like that. But um, yeah, I listen to Bim Bam, I listen to the Avengers Zone, I listen to Sawbones, I listen to manners and wonderful and I honestly I just like have all of them in my library just alternate when I'm on a road trip depending on what kind of mood I'm in and always have some sort of amount to like fill the time that I'm in the car by myself um people always ask if it's weird listening to my family but I just think it's like being in the car with them and having a conversation with them so I really like it being able to listen to people I know um Justin I'm not going to tell me tell you more about my distaste for cereal it's just not my favorite Okay, that's, that's it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you're just gonna make fun of me, like you made fun of me from my barbecue chips, and like I talk about my dish taste or cereal anymore. Um, I don't ever usually get recognized from the podcast here in person. I have, <laughs> uh, Justin has called me a monster now. Um, I have been recognized um, one time in Huntington when I was at craft store. And walking into the craft store, um, I was with my boyfriend and he said, what, have you ever gotten recognized in person? Like, I'd die if I was with you. And someone just came up to you and said, oh my gosh, are you Riley from Still Buffering? And I was like, no, that hasn't ever happened here before. It's probably not ever going to happen when you're with me. And um, then we walked into the craft store and we got whatever we needed and we went to go check out. And she was like, I just want to let you know I love your podcast. And I think that was one of the funniest moments of my life, just kind of looking at him like... 
told you it wasn't gonna happen, but it did. I guess I'm, you know, did people just know me? But no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, that's the only time I've ever gotten recognized in person. Um, favorite still buffering app we've done? Okay, so the episode with Lynn and Will Miranda um is one of the favorites I've ever done just because like I got to have a conversation with Lynn Manuel Miranda who doesn't want to do that at some point if you like musical theater and you listen to musical theater you know who he is and he's just such an inspirational person and getting to talk to him about theater and community theater was one of the greatest moments of my life um but I think other than that one we um we did an episode about body image that was more of like a, a, a serious episode, but we all got to kind of be very like open and real and, and talk about things with each other and be less funny and talk more honestly about things, which I think is um, really important when you're talking about teen stuff. Cause a lot of non-serious stuff happens when you're, or non-funny stuff happens when you're a teen. So, um, you know, Lynn did get Jonathan Groff to call me for my birthday. <laughs> That was um, that was the thing that happened. Uh, Lynn FaceTimed me on my birthday and sang me happy birthday um, while we were on our way to a Dolly Parton pirate-themed dinner theater. And um, then I got a text from that same number that Lynn had FaceTimed me off of. It was like, into the next call you get, which is a very mysterious text to get. And then I answered it, and it was Jonathan Gross singing me happy birthday. And that was, you know, one of the wildest moments of my life because I watched Jonathan Groff when I was um, watching Glee and then listened to him on 36 Questions just like a month before that. And um, I kind of died a little bit because of Jonathan Groff, but he did FaceTime me and sing happy birthday. Just, uh, Justin is correct. Um, It was the best thing. Please explain the dinner theater. Um, we were at the beach, and there was a Pirates Live Adventure Dinner Theater that Dolly Parton had written all the music for, and you sit, like, in a big, like, medieval time style, like, arena, and then they're doing the um, the performing in the middle, and there was, like, water and, and stunts and, and all that kind of stuff, and I did. it was crazy. I mean, we did it, and... Um, yeah, that was what was happening when Jonathan Groff was telling me happy birthday. He asked me what I was doing for my birthday, and um, it was that. <laughs> That's a fun thing to, to say. Um, I have listened to 36 Questions. I love 36 Questions. I listened to it because of Sydney and Justin telling me about it, and I got my parents to listen to it, and I listened to it. And I still have the music album on my phone, and um, yeah, it, it's really good. I love it. I listen to music a lot. Um, any stories from being on the TV show? Um, I think the the best moment of the TV show was um, when we were doing the, the scene up at the museum after Teen Griffin was eaten by the clown box. Um, and we we're all supposed to be running away from the clown box and running into the van. And the you know, Justin Chapson Griffin just came up to us like, hey, you need to act very scared of this clown box and then just run in to the van and don't laugh and be very serious and of course um you know being being in that show is hard to be very serious the whole time but you know they just left us there in the van while the clown box was ominously sitting in front of the car um that was pretty fun also just being called as i was leaving school like hey i got you a spider outfit just go put on some spider web tights and this headband and go be in a spider parade downtown um that was that was pretty interesting. That was pretty fun. <laughs> um, yes, mom, my first show on stage, I was the baby kangaroo to Griffin's Fort and the Elephant. That is true. Um, I, we were in Seussical Musical, and Griffin was Horton, and I thought his name was Gordon, and I called him Gordon. I was four years old, and I was the baby kangaroo. Um, I don't know how long I called Griffin Gordon, but... I know that was the thing that happened. Um, what are some life lessons I've learned from doing the podcast? Um, so uh, I think the podcast has been really cool for me because I've been able to kind of talk about my um, teen experience um, very openly and honestly and talk about things that maybe weren't 
as easy to talk about and that maybe some people don't have a space to talk about them um, and have people on the internet um, that like what you're saying and that are supporting you and are saying, I have the same experience, I'm not the only person to go through that. Or also people just saying like, hey, I like listening to you do this thing. Um, I think that it, it taught me that, you know, when you're in high school or middle school and you, especially when you live in a smaller place, it's really easy to feel like you're alone in some of the experiences you've had. But then, um, you know, you put them out there and have people say that they're, they've had the same things happen to them. And, and you know that like, you are not the only person this has happened to. Being a teenager sometimes is just very isolating, can make you feel very alone, very difficult, weird, crazy, interesting experience. And being able to share it on the internet is sometimes really fun and sometimes really weird. <laughs> um, as someone who has much older siblings, do you ever feel like you may not be as close to them as people of closer age siblings might be? You know, I it's weird to me because I just feel like my sisters and I just have a different relationship than like people or friends that I've had that have siblings or just within a few years of them. I don't think it's necessarily not as close. I think that I'm really close to my sisters. Um, I think it's different. Like I can do things with them that go on trips with them, um, spend time with them in ways that maybe some people can't when their siblings are close in age to them. Um, but I also can talk to them about things that I've been through and they've, I know they've already been through them and they, they help me through them and talk to me about them. And, um, also Sydney had, two little cool girls that are my also best friends and I get to hang out with them too. So I really like that my sisters are older than me because I get to have a really interesting relationship with them. Um, I don't think it's less close or closer. I think it's just different and I like that. I think that's why I made Silva friend. I think that um, it's, really, it's a really fun thing to be able to share with people. My favorite underrated musical? I feel like enough people don't talk about Be More Chill. I think that Be More Chill is one of the um, best musicals in terms of like just like funny but also serious and talks about good things but also just like really entertaining to listen to. Um, I don't know. It's just like I feel like enough people don't know about it. Obviously, there are a lot of people here that know about it. But whenever I'm talking to people that I do musical theater with, there aren't a lot of them that um, are talking about that or have heard of it or even know what it is and I think that um I don't know I think it's really good uh I love play rehearsal is one of I think my top two favorites um uh I think that Michael in the bathroom is my other favorite I think the both of them are just like such opposite ends of like but also kind of saying the same I don't know they're both just very good and um really fun to listen to um, what episode of Still Buffering would you suggest a new listener start with, or is it really good to start anywhere? Um, I think you could start anywhere with our show. I always recommend listening to the ones that have all three of us on it, which I think is just after the first four or five. Um, I think that all of them are really good. I think all of them are good starting points. You obviously can start anywhere. It's not like where you have a story or anything you need to follow. Um, I think that, uh, I don't know. I think our theater episode with Lynn is very good, but also I think that all of our episodes are really good. I think How To Nerd is really good too, because that was our first episode with Taylor, and I think we talked about a lot of fun stuff. So I think that any of those episodes are good starting place, really any of them. Um, what is a moment from a musical that makes you super emotional? Oh gosh, <laughs> um, a lot of them. I think that every time I listen to um, Dear Evan Hansen, uh and he sings words fail um i think that i cry every time i hear that and i also cry every time i hear she used to be mine from waitress both of those moments are just very like i don't know they're just those moments in musicals where the characters are having like this big emotional realization and you get to hear all of their emotions play out through music and i think that I don't know, moments like that are always like really cool in, in musicals because it's not like the funny big dance numbers, but also it's just like really emotional, really good. And you, it's more powerful than, than dialogue can be sometimes when you hear stories like that told through music. Um, so both of those make me very emotional, make me cry every time I listen to them. <laughs> um, 
Yes, the entire second act of Hamilton is um, very emotional. It does make me cry every time I, I listen to it. You know, there are certain moods you're in when listening to music, and you have to be in a certain mood to listen to the second act of Hamilton because you will cry the whole time. You have to be prepared for that when you're listening to it. Um, so I don't know if I talked to... Someone asked about any hilarious stories we haven't heard. Um, I tweeted about this um, at the beginning of my first semester of college. I think I saw someone else ask about it too. Um, I don't know if I ever told it on the show. I really don't remember what I talk about on the show sometimes. But... One of my sweet mates, when she first moved in, um, uh, brought a doll into our dorm um, that I have since been told is from Homestuck. His name is Lil Cal. Uh, and she placed him in various locations around our dorm um, in September, I think, and said that uh, it was about to be Halloween, so she was going to... to a friend had been released, is what she had said, into our dorm. Um, and she placed him in various places with various notes and props. Um, there was one point where I uh, came back and he was under my covers in my bed. Um, also, he uh, was um, sitting on our table in our common area um, with a little cauldron, with a little torn up piece of paper with all my other roommates' names on it. Um, <laughs> there, have been, there have been a lot of things that he's done when he came back because he went away for a while and he came back and he um flipped the couch over flipped the couch over and said that we had made him mad because we forgot about him <laughs> um and yeah he uh that was a fun experience i don't know if i ever got to tell that whole story on the show maybe i did i don't know there are a lot of things i guess stories i told on the show that i just forget i tell um yeah it is definitely on doll watch still about Frank <laughs> Um, but I mean, I love my roommate and, um, you know, it was just a fun experience. <laughs> I wanted to share that with you all if I hadn't already. Um, do, 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 do. I mean, someone dropped the Maximum Fun Network slash donate link. If you all want to become part of the Maximum Fun family, you want to join the Max Fun Drive, um, that's what this stream is for. We've all been doing, um, different fun things and what say they got her tattoo um i know that sydney and justin and travis and uh, teresa have all done live streams doing tutorials and, and answering questions and stuff um so yeah if you want to donate you want to become part of the maximum fun family you want to help our shows the shows you listen to if you enjoy our shows if you just want to share the drive with other people um get really cool gifts if you're a monthly donor you get really cool pins bonus content we play D, &D um all that kind of stuff. A puzzle. It's really cool. As I said, one of our most recent episodes is the perfect amount of pieces. It's only 550 pieces, which is perfect for building a puzzle and listening to, to a podcast. It's not too many, but it's not too few either. It's not too much challenge, but it's, it's, really good. it's a really pretty puzzle too. So that's maximumfund.org slash donate if you want to become part of the Maximum family. Um, George, I became a Max Fun donor this morning. Thank you. That's so kind of you. And we all appreciate it over here at Max Fun. So thank you for becoming a part of the family. Uh, my fave hairstyle. Um, so this is what I do with my hair on a daily basis. I do literally just this, leave it this, um, because doing your hair is time consuming sometimes. And I don't have time like that because I get up 20 minutes before my class starts and then get up, put on clothes. And go to class. Um, but I find myself doing a little like half up, half down hairstyle a lot. I think that it's my, my favorite hairstyle I'll do. So it looks like you did something with your hair, but also it takes like 30 seconds. Um, I recently just cut, I say recently, in December I cut all my hair off. It used to be down to my butt and now it's up to here. Um, so a lot of different um, hairstyles when your hair is this short, but only a lot easier to maintain. So I like my hair better short than I did long. Um, yeah, I don't do much with my hair. So not the person I'm gonna go to for hairstyle advice, that'd be Teresa. She tried to teach me how to do my hair. She did a very good job doing my hair, and then uh, I can't do it the same because I'm I'm not very good at it. Um what class am I taking right now? It's my fave. I'm doing two um uh what are they called? Journalism classes. <laughs> I'm taking two journalism classes, one about news writing, one about media design. Um and then I'm taking Spanish because I'm minoring in Spanish as well. 
I am taking my honors seminar and I'm taking math. The only math class I have to take for all of college. I'm taking it now, get out of way. Um, my favorite is that seminar. I talked about it for whoever was here a few minutes ago with math and art together. Someone called it Mart. It is Mart. Um, it's really fun, really relaxing for when you don't want to do a lot of work because we never have fun work. Just get to make a lot of cool stuff. Um, okay, so I have to go. I have rehearsal um, for Mom and Mia. I do musical theater. Um, so yeah, I have rehearsal I got to go to. Um, but it's been really fun talking to all of you all for this special Max Sun Drive live stream. Uh, thank all of you for coming and joining me. Um, I really appreciate it and for asking all the, the questions and giving me things to talk about. Um, I really have fun doing this, so if you all want to go check out Maximum Fun, check out Soul Buffering, all the other macro shows. Um, yeah, this has been fun. I hope to do it again. So I really had a good time talking to you all. So, bye.